the title piece of Behind the Mask. Here's Mick Fleetwood. The original lineup of Fleetwood Mac was Peter Green, myself, John McVie very shortly after the beginning, and Jeremy Spencer, a very fine bottleneck player. We were very much a blues orientated band, and without blowing my trumpet, I considered to this day that uh, we were a very fine blues band. Like many of the great blues players of our time, Mick, John, and Peter Green all cut their musical teeth with John Mayall. Here's John McVie. When Peter and I were playing with John Mayall, uh, we were doing a Mayall album, and there was some free studio time, so we cut a track, which was an instrumental track, me, Mick, and Peter. And for one of another title, he decided to call it Fleetwood Mac. Mick Fleet with John McVie. And then uh, Mick left John Mayo, Peter left John Mayo, I stayed with John. And for about, I guess a month, he was badgering me. So come on, you, you gotta join us. This went on for about a month, he called a home and he called me on the road. So I said, no, 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 this is, I'm quite happy and secure. And then after, as I say, about a month, I said, yeah, okay, I'm in. A live version of Oh Well from Fleetwood Mac's 1979 tour, almost 10 years after the original version was released. That version featured the song's writer, Peter Green, on guitar. Mick Fleetwood. He's a great writer. He's a, he's a heavyweight. You know, there's no doubt about it. There are a lot of blues guitarists out there, but there are not a, very, not a lot of really excellent players that are white. You know, and Pete was most definitely one of them. But Peter's personal demons caused him to abandon the Fleetwood Mac ship in May of 1970. Well, Pete was very preoccupied with the other side of things, so to speak. He was continual contention in his mind with the devil and all sorts of weird stuff, which was basically pretty heavy in actual fact. Meanwhile, the band carried on without Green. Christine Perfect married John McVie and abandoned her musical career to become a housewife. We all rented this this uh, converted oast house, which is out in Surrey. I was madly cooking along with all the other wives, and the guys were all rehearsing in this huge, great big room. And uh, of course, I knew all the songs just because I was there. It was ten days before the, the the tour was due to start, and they didn't like the way the band was sounding. So they, the the thing was, they just came out of the rehearsal room and said, Chris. You're in the band. Christine McVie, singer, keyboardist, and songwriter, became an important part of the band, as you can hear, on her Spare Me a Little of Your Love from 1972's Bear Trees. Hi, this is Christine McVie on Fleetwood Mac. Up close. Stick around. We'll be right back. Up close and perhaps eerie ways. Here's Mick Fleetwood. I would always room with Jeremy. We booked into a hotel off Hollywood Boulevard. He said, I'm just going down to my usual uh, sort of bookshop. Uh, sort of all those weird occulty sort of books or whatever. Or, you know, go and buy a, cop a new copy of The Prophet or something. And he never came back. Eventually we found him in uh, downtown L.A. Shaved head, didn't answer to his name. Uh, they'd done the job on him. Fleetwood Mac needed a guitarist to replace Jeremy Spencer, and so... Bob Welch joined Fleetwood Mac. You are here Sentimental Lady, from Bare Trees, written by Bob Welch. Mick Fleetwood. We did an album called Heroes Are Hard To Find. After the Heroes Are Hard To, uh, to Find tour, Bob was going through a lot of personal pressure with his wife at that point in time. And I just had a sneaking suspicion that he was gonna buzz off, you know, at the end of the tour. But during the tour, we'd had a little break. And Mick went off looking for studios for us to record him, which was going to be our next album with Bob, you know, just carry on. And that's where I heard Stevie and Lindsay. I played the, the tapes to John and Christine. They certainly liked the, the music, and I just said, well, 
Let's meet Christine McVie. I didn't really fancy the idea at all, because if, you know, two girls don't get on, they really don't get on, you know. I said, look, well, I'll meet with her if I like her. We'll talk again. And it just so happened that uh, that we really hit it off the first time I really sat down and talked to her. I loved her sense of humor. Say You Love Me from Fleetwood Mac. Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks got the invitation to join Fleetwood Mac over the phone on New Year's Eve. Here's Stevie. I thought that it was the right move because I thought, first of all, I'm tired of starving. I'm tired of being a waitress. I'm tired of being a cleaning lady. So I think we should definitely join Fleetwood Mac because they're going to pay us each $200 a week starting tomorrow, which means $400 a week, right? And as soon as we go into recording, $400 a week a piece that's $800 a week, we're going to be rich. So since I think that we can additionally add something to their band, I think we should definitely do this because we could be dead by next year because of food, lack of food. Christine McVie's Over My Head from Fleetwood Mac. Hello, this is John McVie. Keep listening. You've got Fleetwood Mac up close. Fleetwood Mac's gamble of Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks paid immediate dividends. Lindsey wrote two songs on 1975's Fleetwood Mac, while Stevie wrote three of her own. These included Rhiannon, which shot to number 11, the first song by the band to go higher than number 20. Rhiannon comes from um, a book that I read that was just your basic trashy novel that you pick up on the road somewhere that was called Triad, and it had um, two names in it that I especially loved. The first one I really loved the most was Rhiannon, and the second one was Branwen. And uh, I went up to Aspen, and I ended up writing Rhiannon and Landslide very quickly. I mean, like on a little funky electric piano. Peter Green's choice of the name Fleetwood Mac was brilliant, considering the fact that Mick and Mac are the only two left from the original lineup. Here's Mick. One would have to say that that probably that the fact that my, myself and John have been there all the time has stabilized some situations which would have become very unstable and maybe potentially have led to this band breaking up. But that combination also has helped define the band sound. Here's Stevie Nicks. It's a rhythm section that you can be down the street and hear somebody stereo and hear a song and all you can hear is the bass and the drums it'll wake me up in the middle of the night sometimes because I'll just have the radio on and a Fleetwood Mac song will come on and it will literally wake me up out of a really deep sleep because I hear that bass and drums and no matter again whether it was me or Rick or Billy or Christine or anybody Mick and John their sound comes across first Make love and fun from rumors. Hello, this is Mick Fleetwood of Fleetwood Mac. Up close, we'll be right back just after this. Here's Fleetwood Mac's Mick Fleetwood. Making the Rumors album was, in retrospect, very, very bizarre. We were in the middle of one realizing that everyone was thrilled with what the band was doing. We enjoyed like a nearly five million selling album. Embarking on the Rumors project, that, that, that album was a very important step to the band. To all of us. So consequently, we were just in the middle of a lot of very powerful stuff, situation, and then the emotional stuff, where everyone breaking up. I'd broken up with my wife. No one hated one another. It just, just you know, people were wait, at the record company were waiting to get the terrible phone call that they'd all collapsed and that was it. Someone had left. You know. We never once got anywhere near even talking about such a thing could happen. But it took its toll, and it was not easy for you know, the two couples to find a way to make things work. And we'll probably always be in the set. People ask me, you know, how do you how do you sing dreams every night? I say, well, I just you know I just transport myself back to the record plant, sitting up on the Marshall Amplifier cross-legged singing because I wrote it at the record plant and uh, 
I just take myself back to that place and I remember why I wrote it and what kind of frame of mind I was in and I and I just try to become that entity again that was right there seriously writing it and so when I sing it I love singing it I'm not tired of it Christine McVie. I mean, you know, I think a lot of our songs, you know, with regard to Fleetwood Mac, are, are written about one another. That that happens when you surrounded with all these complicated people all the time, you know, these complicated situations develop, you know, and it does make, you know, it does make for interesting lyrics. We were trying to figure out a name for the Rumours album that that John McVie came up with the, the title for, because I don't know how, in, in what context, but he, he said the word Rumours, and then we realised that it was, it was like a diary, you know, because all the songs were about specific people in the band. 